Hello and welcome back to Badger Lodge Garage. Happy New Year and welcome to this Austin van once again. In the last video you saw we did get it going um, but we had issues. We had a fuel tank that was leaking, we had a radiator that was leaking and obviously definitely no brakes. Uh, we now have stuff. We've got parts, that's one of them. We've got more of them spread all over the shop. Uh, so we sort of need a plan of what to do first but um, I don't really know. We're just going to make it up as always. Uh, this time I've got some overalls on, you know, that's a first. Because normally I just get covered, but this time I thought, you know what, I'll treat myself. It's a new year. What we're going to do, I think, to start with what I want to achieve is to get this to run off the fuel tank. I've got a brand new fuel tank for it and new fuel lines. I would like to be able to run it up to temperature without feeding it from a bottle or hanging something to put fuel into it. So I'm going to put the tank in, run it, get it up to temperature probably put some coolant flush in before I change the radiator because I don't want to fill the brand new radiator up with gunge and road crap and rust. So we'll do that first, make sure it's flushing through, then we'll change the radiator. Then we might look at brakes. I don't know. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't know how long it's going to take to achieve what we're trying to achieve. Um, and that's another thing as well. Did you like the longer videos? Um, you know, the last one was nearly an hour long. I don't know, put it down in the comments. Should it be shorter? Do you prefer half an hour or less? I don't know, let me know. But in the meantime, we're gonna get into taking the tank out. So cue us in the past, because I videoed this other bit a couple of days ago. Then we'll come back to the future. It's got this nice section of floor you can remove to see the top of the tank, which is marvelous. So I'm gonna take all these screws out, which are all coming out beautifully which is a you know that never happens to me normally so there you go even with a normal screwdriver look at that there's only one that i actually had to use this you still have the chrome on them like. yeah excellent stuff is that one stuck yeah, yeah looks like it okay more power there we go was that one more? Uh, yeah, top left. Interesting to see what I've got right beneath. Oh, yeah. Excellent. We just need to figure out a way to pry it out. Yeah, uh, chuck that over there. I can see, I can see ground below. You can give a push yeah. up from underneath. Hold there. on, let me just have a little. Try not to lose all the washes. Oh, oh, that, that's crispy. But basically okay. It's all there. <laughs> oh God, don't breathe that in. <laughs> mm, excellent. Fuel sender wire. And that's good. And then it's literally the nuts here underneath all this other rubbish and then we can take oh we can actually leave that bar in and take these ones out and just lift the whole lot out the top that'll make life easier nice excellent stuff all right we'll do that yeah the most rotten bit in the entire van it's a shame it went at the bottom really because the top's quite nice but there you go it's all the waters yeah it's the steel shining through still but there you go, the water obviously set at the bottom and rotted it out, so there you go. And this was before the ethanol in fuel, but it's been a very long time. But, yeah, you can see the rest of it. It's done some off-roading because it's just covered in dust, you know, fine field dust. But there's, again, there's no rot. I don't know what that is. The chassis, the surface, is. that's a breather. That's a breather on the back of the diff. That'd be blocked. So this is good. I've not done a van like this before, and um, this makes life so much easier. See if any of the any of these are going to come out now. That'd be good for a laugh. All right. Okay. Screws. That's one thing. Ah. <laughs> Skin. Ah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I'll let some some of the original black paint. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's going to clean up quite nice. Obviously, we've got a brand new tank for this because I'm not messing around with fuel tanks. 
can't breathe that in. <laughs> so we've got the, uh, thought just take the sender out while it's there because I can get a better purchase on the screws and they all came out really nicely. But you can really see how damp it was in there. Look at the state of that. That must have pretty much had water sitting in it. I imagine because this, this hose we replaced was so knackered at some point. Or it might have even had the cap off it. The amount of water in there is just ridiculous, really. But of course, it does. These things do attract condensation over time. This is seized. Uh, it's uh, she's stuck. It might free off, or I might just buy another one. Don't know. Depends how well it comes back around. But we will try and clean it up and see if we can make it work. As you, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work because it's quite easy to replace because this panel comes off. So. Um, I think it's worth a worth a go, and if not, they're pretty pretty straightforward and cheap to replace anyway. So we'll go from there. So next thing, we'll try and get this line of screws off. They're nutted from underneath. This one, take my bit of hose that we cobbled on last time, and then the whole lot should pull out. Oh, and of course the uh, the solid steel fuel line. It's uh, got a just like a hydraulic fitting on there. Take that out. And we should be good to go. Right. So. Most of these broke off, and when we just, you know, underneath, which is fine because that was easier than them all round off. Taken that off, and I did have to cut the uh, cut the steel fuel line with just a little pipe cutter, um, and then um, that's that's literally it. Uh, yeah, it is. There's nothing else. It just sits on it. Bring it out of there. And there it is. This fitting was just rounding. I wanted to get it off, but I think I was just going to destroy it. So by cutting that off, I hopefully should be able to get a socket on it and we can save that fitting and use it in the new one. So it's not the end of the world. I'll just uh, either reuse that or make a whole new line up to the front, which probably be more sensible. Because if it's anything like this tank, it have a few holes in it. Look at that. Gone, gone. All right. Well, we do have a new tank, so uh, we'll have to put it in. So, another good news, we've just got, the, I said in the last video, the pressure friction plate was stuck to the flywheel, so we couldn't select gears. Um, and it didn't want to pop free. I did try it, we put it in gear, clutch down, try to start it, it wouldn't have it, it was well stuck. So what I ended up with is my brother sitting inside with his foot on the clutch, and I used a starting handle. I basically jumped on it a few times and eventually it went. So now we should be able to select some gears. Okay. All right, so we did just run it for a sec before we try, so it should just start. Oil pressure lights doing its own thing basically, not the lesser it does. To start by doing what we didn't do last time and is get rid of all of this shredded paper and mouse debris because uh, we don't want to be eating mouse poo the whole time that's not very fun uh, and I do want to take this next bit of floor out because it comes out and that will give us nice access to the top of the chassis have another better look and um, and the fuel line because we we're replacing it all the way to the front did you just eat some of that no but it's, it's in the air <laughs> There you go, that's the disease there, look. The drop it and that, I mean, I don't know, that was, oh. I'm gonna mold, mold and mouse poo. This is what happens when you leave things in barns. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, so the mouse latrine has been been removed. I just uh, don't know if that's going to do a great deal, but it might do something. Let's pull this bit of floor out, then we can see the fuel line a bit better. And there you go. That came straight out again. And then we've got access straight to the top of the chassis, straight to the brake lines, prop shaft, fuel line going across this side. Excellent stuff. That just runs along the frame. And still, this is all just surface. Not a hole in it. Did you say, yeah, look, you got, it's all just prop shaft UJs, feels okay. That. Oh, rubbish. We've got a full, full set of fuel lines, not fuel lines, um, fuel set of brake lines and the flexi hoses, um, wheel cylinders all around for this. That'll be later on. We'll do fuel first. I'll drop tank in, trying to pull this line out. I've got a, not the new um, copper fuel lines, we're running from front to back. All right, so the tank's just in, sat straight where it was. There's no rot or anything to contend with there. We've pulled the old fuel line out. It's not put in properly yet. We've just pulled it back through. Gonna uh, go straight into this fitting down here. It's a, this is a pre-made fuel line that they um, sell at ESM, which is really good. Um, so I thought I'd get that, it'd be easier. Um, plumb it in, then we can work out all the curves and um, how we're gonna put it up to the chassis. That tank's in. We've done a little bit of a curve and round. Up down there, all the original clips are still in. So we run it back underneath. We're gonna do a bit more um, navigating around. We didn't show putting that back in because it's literally plonked back in. It's not screwed in yet. So we just have to kink around that shock absorber. Not the nicest bend, but I forgot my pipe bender. So I've done it around the back of a socket and um, it'll work and there it is run up into the pump now as i say i forgot my pipe bender so i used the end of this socket just an impact socket big one and it had this nice perfectly sized track to sort of run the pipe round so that worked quite well it's not as neat as it can be yet but um and it's not done underneath properly yet because it's as you can see this isn't the greatest surface to try and crawl underneath on um, but it will work for now we'll get fuel up the front and then once we can get it up in the air a bit easier i can make it look pretty because it's one thing i really don't like it gets on my nerves is messy wiring and messy pipes so we'll try and keep it as neat as possible but here we should be able to um providing that pump will spring back into life get it to run off the tank which is quite exciting so what i'm going to do with this is Put a filter in it even though it's a new tank and lines um, i still like to have a filter in and we're going to run it how you're not meant to run it or how the purists don't like you to run it which is around this corner uh, let's go and get some hose clips run it around there around there and into the into the carb like that i think it keeps it quite neat then um, with no messing around so I shall go and get some clamps and a filter and then we'll put it sort of here and you can see if there's any anything because even though it's a brand new tank there's potential for some machining bits and crap to get in so um, even if it's just for a little bit we'll run a filter in it which is in the van and so is the clips All right this time it won't fall out the bottom or shouldn't do anyway it's in, lines in. Brand new tank. I'll just chuck this whole two gallon can in. Give us a little bit to work with then. Yep, not all falling out of the bottom. If it was, I wouldn't be pleased. Yep, good. 
filter, got the pipe in there, got the filter in it, just run it straight into the carb. Still haven't done anything with the carb, it's just kind of there, really. But, you know, if it works, it works. Just going to turn the ignition on and see if we can suck some fuel up. <laughs> yeah. Don't know if the pump's going to go. Got no ignition. Okay. Why is that? There you go. Try again. There we go. We have ignition. But we're no pumpy. Let's see if we can adjust it. Negative. Oh. Got dodgy electricals. Might have to clean the points in this pump. We can get it to pump by doing that. It is pumping, but not carrying on to pump. Right, you have to clean the points. See what carnage lies beneath. Oh yeah, it's a little bit. A little bit old and cruddy, I suppose. Just we'll give it a bit of a clean and see what we can find. Go for it. And clean up this wire as well. This contact was a bit nasty. Years worth of damp, not done anything any good. A little bit of emery, and then we've got a set of points on the back. And like points in the distributor, we need to make a connection. So, I'm going to run some emery between the two. You can buy full rebuild kits for these pumps, and you can buy new ones from SU that don't have points, which is Probably not a bad thing either, to be honest. I don't know if that's going to make much difference, but we'll give it a go. I'll we'll leave the... No, oh, no, I'll have to put the cap on, won't we? There's the nut. There's the nut. Might need to go a bit more, but we'll give that a go. See if that's done anything at all. Not really. You get one click out of the thing. Made it worse. <laughs> this is really bad earth, of course. Always potential. Wonder what that other pump's like. You can always just chuck the wires on and see what it does. We swapped the pump. We did clean the points on the other one. It just wasn't playing ball. I think it uh, definitely needs a re-kit. This one was just lying in there. It was just rolling around. We saw it when we first had a look. And this one, we've cleaned the points up, and it did show a bit more life. So we're going to give it a go. And whether it actually pumps is another question. But uh, we'll just chuck it on and see. We'll leave the back off for now, so all the sparks fly around and it catches fire. Might prime it as well. Where's that gone? We've lost it. Oh, there it is. Let's 
try not to spray it all over the points at the back and make a big fire. Just give the diaphragm a chance to soften up a little bit and find his ethanol juice. See if anything happens. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire, that would be an inconvenience. Oh, it, uh, yeah. did one. Did one. Again. I wonder if I bent that too far now. Twitching the fuel, yeah. Yeah. That's pulling fuel. Hey! But is it going to pull fuel? More of a free flow out the end. Come on. That diaphragm's still very old and crispy. Yeah. Oh, yep. It's got some load on her. What a waste. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the diet is the float bowl full. Could be actually. I've been going for a while. Yeah, it could be that the float bowl has actually got some fuel in it. So that means I think we need to uh, try and start it. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 That's running off the pump. Yeah. But it does work quite well with. This is only a quick gasket for temporarily because we're going to run it without the thermostat. So it doesn't have to be anywhere near perfect. Right, so we've got the pump going. Uh, I've put the thermostat housing back on it and knocked up a quick gasket. I've glued that in there with no thermostat just to get a bit more flow in it. So I'm going to chuck some juice in and chuck some, um, where's it gone? Some of this radiator flush in and we'll just uh, see if we can run it up. Hopefully that doesn't all leak out everywhere as soon as we start cleaning things. <laughs> but probably will. Chuck a bit of this in, chuck some of that rad flush in and see. smell of anything. It says this is good for 10 litres, which is nowhere near this, but we'll just put it all in, why not? What could possibly go wrong? Ooh, frothy. It's got soap in it. All right, hopefully the fuel pump's gonna keep going. And we'll, uh, See if we can run it. Yep. 
Oh, more choke. Hey. Going the wrong way a little bit. Yeah. Just uh, sprayed the fuel pump. Yeah. Okay, so I've gone slightly overkill on the uh, on the rad cleaning. Okay, so that went really quite well, I think. Because we've got a free engine bay clean at the same time. Hopefully there's some water and not just foam. Yeah. It's a roaring success thus far. It's the rag to stop a bit of splash back, but there you go, listen to that. Chucks a fan belt on it as well. Fuel sender doesn't work. We tried that out of it as well, just grounding it out and putting it up and down. It's dead, but it had seized up and was a bit nasty. So there you go. Mm. Right. So didn't get quite as far as I hoped to get because we are getting dark now. But we did get the tank in. We've got it running off the tank. That pump works after a bit of fan dangling um, but that's just the one that was just rolling around on the floor so that's good um, flushed the radiator through with some of that stuff had a bit of a foam party um, so next time I want to change the radiator and the hoses and also put some more screws in because I've only got like none gravity is holding the tank in at the moment so that's fine um, also probably worth banging off all the wheels and trying to get the drums off to see what kind of carnage lays beneath. I do have the entire set of wheel cylinders, lines, everything else for that, because there's no point when the vehicle's been sat for 30 years doing half measures because it's going to blow out hoses and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's all we can do for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one where we'll be back on this again. Cheerio.